Sorry, I had to continue that video. Um, I would say for somebody that's um, in the early stages of, say, Alzheimer's, um, a support group would be <clears throat> a good place to start. So um, I think first first and foremost for, for any um, person that's dealing with the ailment, particularly um, Alzheimer's, it's important to kind of know where where they are as far as maybe education um you know do they have access to a computer access to a telephone access to a car so that they can get to these places um all of that kind of you know comes into play do they are do they have someone that um you know can can help them to get to these resources so um I, I just may may believe that um, the person that I'm working with uh, has Alzheimer's disease, and they're in in pretty early stages of it, but they are having some memory loss. So um, there are support groups, a lot of support groups in Georgia. Um, I I work at Emory, so I specifically work um, at a place that has like one of the country's leading uh, cognitive and behavioral clinics here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, this this place is actually open from Monday through Friday, um, from 8:30 in the morning to five in the um, in the evening, and they accept all insurances. Um, I actually called the place, and you know, like I was going to um, send somebody there. And the young lady told me that um, if the person that's seeking the care couldn't pay, uh, I think it's a $500 deposit if they're, if they're self-paying. And um, once the patient gives the $500 as a deposit, then they can expedite um, the, the services that they need, like the lab work that they may need, um, that sort of thing. Uh, also, let's see, there's a memory clinic at uh, University of Georgia, and that memory clinic is open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 6, and Friday 8 to 5, and um, their services include, uh, let's see, neuropsychological assessment of memory problems among older adults, 60 and older. Uh, interviews with patients and families, functional status assessment, which um, includes questions about how well his or her family or, or how they can perform uh, daily activities, um, neuropsychological assessments of orientation, memory, attention, language skills, and spatial abilities. So that's UGA. Also, um, let's see, kind of if you want to, if they wanted to streamline it, if the family, Google is a, a great resource, I will say. Um, so if you, if you want to kind of skip all of that, um, maybe you just type in support group in my area for Alzheimer's. Um, let's see what there, there was a lot of different things. Sorry referring to my papers um, there's a early memory loss support group um, that's um, run out of Emory University um, also there's family support groups so there's um, support groups for for family members of people that are suffering from Alzheimer's because they will be the primary caregivers at, at some point, even if they decide to put them in a in a um, institution um, of of these people, and they kind of see the spectrum of them being who you know who they remember them to be to being um, really ill, unfortunately. So I mean, there's like a wealth a wealth of information. I'm trying to be as streamlined as I can be, but they're organized by. Um, counties so whatever county that you're in um, you, you can find information about that um, the targeted group of course like I just mentioned um, it would be family members it would be 
the person that's affected by the Alzheimer's themselves. Um, and also there's, uh, there's also places uh, like hospitals that they try to give the people that are caring for persons with Alzheimer's disease, they try to give them special training about how to deal um, and care for someone with memory loss and um, orientation uh, dysmorphia. So um, there's that. Uh, what specific services are provided? Um, again, there's peer support for the person that's affected by the Alzheimer's disease. There's um, support. I, I also um, went to Alzheimer's Association. That's a really good place, obviously, um, for obvious reasons, because it specifically um, deals with someone that's being affected by Alzheimer's disease. And they have telephone support groups for persons that can't get to the actual support group. And this is held twice monthly. Um, they have an 800 number um, for the persons to call. So it's kind of like, um, I, I don't know if it's um, if they have video chatting as of yet, but I know it's more like a, um, a conference call sort of situation. So um, the, the person that's being affected and also their caregiver can listen in um, in the support group and get information about that. And again, also the actual website of Alzheimer's Association, you can get a lot of um, emails. I think um, they have a newsletter as well about different uh, studies that are going on, um, different trials um, of medication for um, Alzheimer's uh, patients and um, again support groups and uh, just 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 information that's coming out that um, the person affected by Alzheimer's disease and also their caregiver can go onto the website and and read about that. Uh, who is facilitating these groups? Um, at Emory, a, um, a lot. There's nurses. There's um, nurses that specifically work with Alzheimer's patients. Um, let's see, Susan Susan Formby. She is a doctor of uh, psychology. Uh, oh, excuse me, psychiatry. So she's um, a psychiatrist. So she deals with a lot of medications of patients um, that that are dealing with Alzheimer's and and other sorts of disorders that may. Um, cross over like depression, anxiety, those sorts of things. So she's able to um, medicate or, or prescribe medications for um, those patients. But um, from what I've read, it's a lot of nurses, it's a lot of psychiatrists, it's a lot of psychologists and um, uh, licensed pra uh, practicing counselors that um, run these, these um, support groups that have um, special training uh, in dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And um, the time and location of the support services, a lot of them look like they're held monthly. Um, I think that the one that's at Emory, the family support group, is held twice monthly. Um, I, I read one, let me see, uh, like I said, you can go to your local chapter, but from the ones that I've read, they look like they're held um, monthly. But again, uh, if you if the person wanted more information about um, Alzheimer's disease, they can go online to um, the specific uh, association, dementia. Uh, I think they have one for dementia. They also have um, one for persons that have... Um, like traumatic brain injuries. Um, I know there's Parkinson's, uh, a Parkinson's association. So there's a lot of resources out there. And I think once you go to those resources, then you, then you can kind of like um, condense the information according to the state that you live in and then uh, the county and so on and so forth. So. I also will say that if you if um, persons are looking for um, care, like maybe a home, uh, if if 
uh, the caretakers are no longer able to see after um, those suffering from Alzheimer's and uh, dementia or, or any neurocognitive disorder, um, you can go to your local um, DFAX office and they should have, um, like here in Georgia, they have one that's called um, Division of Aging, Aging Services. And so they help people find, like here, here's a packet here, and they probably can't see that, but it says Elder Locator. So this, I mean, is, you know, talks about like different homes what kind of homes are they daycares are they um, assisted living homes are they um, specifically for people um, that suffer from Alzheimer's and dementia because um, a lot of um, people can't um, care for or well how, how would I say aren't equipped to take care of persons that are suffering you know, maybe severely from um, dementia or Alzheimer's. So being able to streamline that sort of care for, you know, someone's parent or brother, sister, um, husband or wife is, is a great resource. Um, so uh, again, like I said, I would start, I would start from there. Um, a lot of the times, you know, if it's an elderly patient, they don't really know a whole, whole lot about computers and how um, how they may navigate so um, you know if they have another existing illness say like uh, diabetes or if they have had a fall or something like that then it's, it's kind of up to the hospital to assess you know maybe what's going on with them and then they their case manager um, can kind of step in and maybe um, expedite how they will go about finding facilities and finding support groups that would help them with Alzheimer's so um, that is my story and I'm sticking to it and um, happy happy Father's Day Dr. Mata thank you for listening